In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this interview with Andrew Carrier, Gilbert Verdian, as well as Martin. This is a very educational video, and you guys have to know the information that is within. So if you like quant, if you like QNT, the overledger, I'm here to give you this latest quant news, and we'll be giving you lots and lots of quant news because we are quant maxis here. We love quant, and for good reason. Uh, I'm not a dreamer. I'm a very statistical, logical thinker. I like to have the the hard hard facts when it comes to, especially when it comes to crypto or when it comes to investing, especially this is no game saying that nothing I say in this video is financial advice. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. So like I say, guys, we're going to be taking a look at this interview. I have already watched the entire thing. It is very long. I'm going to cut to the specific key parts that I found very important. I'm going to kind of summarize what they mean, as well as we're going to be exploring some of uh, uh, the FUD that gets thrown around. Because obviously, if you guys are here, you either love quant or you hate quant. And so for the people who love quant, you're going to love this. It's very uh, affirming and, it, and it's, very, it's very strengthening to our argument on the side of quant. If you hate quant, uh, sorry to tell you, we're going to be going over some of the FUD that you may have, some of the concerns you may have, possibly, and then we're going to explain that. So it's really important. Um, and by the way, if you guys were here for my last uh, quant video, we went over a little Bitcoin analysis as well as a quant analysis. With our Bitcoin analysis, we drew this sort of uh, rough sketch here, this line, uh, based on some Bitcoin order book, uh, as well as Fibonacci, etc. Uh, a few different trading methods, including RSI and volume. And funny enough, we went up, just like we said, we went up right into our volume, we hit the key uh, selling pressure hit it and now we've been kind of consolidating up in this area so I'm going to be explaining at the end of this video where I think the market is going to go next but like I said guys nothing I say in this video is financial advice all right so back we're going to get to this video right away I'm going to hop in we're around the six minute mark here and pay attention I'm going to pop away for this that's probably not how you pronounce it it's as close as I can get uh, from you next um she talks about interoperability. She said the solution is clear. It's interoperability. Um, but then she went on to say, as far as I know, there are not yet 100% secured interoperability protocols. Too often the bridges act as open bridges. And that still needs to be developed. Gilbert, what's, what's, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, I think that's um, coming from what, what has happened recently, especially in the last year, around cross-chain bridges on public networks. Yeah. Um, the, the issue is... A lot of those cross-chain bridges are not well developed, and you know security is a very complicated topic. It's not easy to secure infrastructure, and it's not easy to secure money. So, the way they've been implemented, um, what we've seen time and time again, has been prone to you know human error, which causes a vulnerability, which causes eventually some sort of compromise and a hack, and, and you know funds are stolen, and and the issue is. A lot of these are on chain, which what it means is it's always um, accessible. So anyone can start probing and interacting with these cross chain bridges and start finding vulnerabilities and holes. Um, whereas in traditional systems, in banking and capital markets, all of those um, applications and infrastructure are, are, are very well protected. They're under many layers of firewalls and, and other you know, controls. Um, and so they're very difficult to access for you to probe uh, to, to find vulnerabilities. Um, how you solve that, and, and we've taken that approach. We, you know, we, we come from that background. We've been in this space for, for, for quite a while. Um, we, we've created a hybrid approach where you are um, working with bridges, but those are not easily probable or accessible to third parties. You have to use a protected infrastructure of what we've developed to be able to interact with these bridges. So it's, it's secure smart contracts. It's not just a, a smart contract on, on the chains. So we've solved that. And, and we, we So guys, there it is. Gilbert Verdian absolutely shutting down the FUD. And I don't, I don't blame uh, the person who actually did uh, think this. Obviously, this is a clear sign that the education in not only for quant and overledger, but just the general education for uh, crypto and blockchain technology isn't there yet. So as we develop, as we move forward, people are going to have more and more eyes on especially the security of blockchain. So let's summarize what Gilbert said. Gilbert is speaking about these 
uh, blockchain bridges. And essentially, these are connections between blockchains. So if you want to communicate between Ethereum and Solana, you need a bridge. But anybody can develop these bridges. So what we have is subpar developers developing these bridges without any kind of background in security, without any background in securities. So we have Gilbert Verdian, who is developing this uh, system, which has already been solved, this process of building these secure bridges. Because the problem that he emphasized in this explanation was the fact that people, malicious actors, can go check on the code because it's that's how blockchain works. You can everything's open source. You can see everything. They can check the code. They can find vulnerabilities, and then they can act maliciously based on those. They can act on those vulnerabilities, so they can take advantage, steal money, whatever they want to do. So that is what Gilbert is pointing out here, and he is saying that Quant has already solved this issue. It's already been solved. So very nice. Simply put, shutting down the FUD. So if this was something you guys were concerned about, fear not, Gilbert is here to shut you down uh, because Quant has already solved this problem. And yeah, I don't think there's much else to say about that. Very, very interesting. Uh, Of course, when it comes to uh, enterprises who want to use blockchain technology or especially companies that want to utilize multiple blockchains for their enterprise, what they want is they want these cross-chain bridges so they can communicate with both blockchains seamlessly but the problem is why would an enterprise rely on some sub subpar developer who's created a bridge that might be secure not sure or would they trust gilbert verdian a person who's worked in securities on an international level and had many many connections with uh, federal level security i know who i trust but that's just me So let's move on to the next part of this video. We're going to hop over to, I believe it's around 11 minutes. So I'm going to pop away again. Of the standards that everyone's going to eventually use. So in summary, whatever the definition of interoperability is, you would say we've we've solved this. Interoperability is multifaceted. It's um, within ISO. I mean, we're creating an interoperability framework, which not only looks at technical, it looks at legal, business, governance, and other types of interoperability, which if you bring it all together, you're creating a common set of rules between participants on how they should interact and transact. And then you're creating common protocols where they can actually talk to each other. So those two are, is really what true harmonized interoperability should be. The question that you ask, when the customers think that interoperability is solved, yeah. is when all of their customers can talk to all of the customers they want to without any friction. Right? And our view is there's not one vendor that's going to do that. Right? You get a lot of, particularly some of the, 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 the larger vendors and some of the blockchain vendors, if everybody uses our solution, it will be interoperable. That's not going to work, not at this point in the market anyway. So to Gilbert's point, the reason why we're creating standards is so that our solutions can work with other people's solutions and this thing can be stitched together into one large global community because mm-hmm. it's the community um, the rules for that, how the how the schemes work together, the jurisdictions, the formats that make it straightforward and frictionless to, to, to conduct business. That, I think, is the interoperability that we're aiming for. So what can we take from this part of the video? Well, what's mo- the most important aspect of this video is that interoperability can only exist with a framework. It can only exist with a set of regulations and rules in place. So everybody has to kind of follow the lead. So... Where Quant separates itself from what you might consider competition is Quant is not out here trying to convince everybody, oh, we have the solution, you need to use our solution, like they were saying. They're saying, guys, we need to all come together and make a rule set, and therefore we can work in harmony. So not they don't want to be the one size fits all. They don't think it's possible. So what Quant wants to do is create maybe a handful of interoperability solutions, interoperability vendors, as they call it, And so everybody can kind of stitch the interoperability together, provided that they all follow the framework. Now, why would Quant be the company or be the people that are making this framework? And why is that beneficial? It is very beneficial if Quant makes the framework or if Gilbert Verdian helps to make the framework because it is going to benefit Quant in the end. Gilbert Verdian is not going to make a framework that doesn't involve a Quant or that doesn't support Quant. So we can safely assume that if Gilbert Verdian, if Gilbert Verdian and his team develop the uh, ISO framework that is going to lead us into our interoperability framework for all of these interoperability vendors, 
is going to support Quant significantly. And this is so important, guys, because this is if this happens, if Gilbert creates the framework, Quant wins. And of course, there's going to be other interoperability solutions that are compatible with this. Like they were saying in this video, they are not creating uh, a framework that they want everybody to have to change and adapt to. They're trying to create a framework that allows uh, the main players in the game, I suppose, to already connect with the interoperability. So it's very much a maze that they're trying to develop these standards and why they're taking so long to develop. But the point is, this is going to significantly benefit Quant in the long run. And so why would Gilbert be one of the people that actually creates these ISO standards that creates these standards? Gilbert is an amazing resume. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I call it out quite often. Gilbert has an extensive background in this sort of field. So <laughs> something I actually want to show you guys that I saw, I thought it was quite funny. I saw it on Reddit, actually. Uh, somebody actually asked uh, the chat GPT AI, if you guys have seen this crazy thing, this um, asked it, explain in detail why Quant is the interoperability leader of all cryptos. Why Gilbert Verdian is a great leader and CEO and explain the competitive advantage it has over the projects based on real life use cases and implementations across different industries. This AI is actually disgustingly uh, crazy. It is so good. It is kind of concerning how good this AI is. So I'm going to read this bit here. Um, Quant is an, actually, I'm just going to read the Gilbert bit. If you want to pause and read this, feel free. But I just think this is a perfect opportunity. Uh, rather than going and looking at his resume like I usually do, we can read this because this kind of makes it fun. So Gilbert Verdian is a great leader and CEO of QNT because he has an extensive experience in both the blockchain and cybersecurity industries. He has been an advisor to the United Nations and is an advisor to a number of international companies, including Amazon and Microsoft. His leadership has been instrumental in the development of QNT's Overledger platform, which is the key to his success. He has also been a strong advocate for the adoption of blockchain technology and its potential to revolutionize the way we interact with data and money. Very cool explanation written by a robot, guys. Written by a robot. Ultimately, guys, Gilbert is a very trusted individual, and I feel like enterprises and governments would be a lot more comfortable allowing Gilbert to develop these standards to allow Gilbert to be part of this 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 community, rather than Joe Blow who made a who made a blockchain. So this is very uh, important information. People don't invest in businesses; they invest in people. And I personally am invested in Gilbert. So as the last part of this video, I'm going to kind of explain why we would need interoperability in the first place. Because there's a lot of people who are probably asking themselves right now, okay, but what if we don't even need interoperability? Why don't we just use one blockchain and that's going to be the government blockchain? However, it's, however it's going to work, we don't need interoperability. And I'm here to tell you, we definitely, definitely do need interoperability. So... I made a video, I made a couple videos, uh, a couple back, one on UST and one on SIA. I will have them at the very end of this video. I will have them on the uh, little panel there so you can see them and you can watch them. So if you skip to the end of this video and want to watch it right now, go for it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to briefly explain a little bit into the ideas that I share in those videos. So interoperability, why do we need it in the first place? So I'm going to talk about SIA. And SIA is a company that is actually associated with many, many banks. And what they do is they're a middleman for technology. Okay, so a technology company will come to SIA. We, they say, we have this solution. I think it would work well if you implemented this with your connections, with your bank connections. They, if SIA likes the idea, they say, okay. And they use it for their technology solutions for their clients, which are these banks. So let's imagine a bank wants a blockchain solution for their data. They want to store data on a blockchain. See, they would go to SIA. They say, we need this solution. How do we do it? SIA says, okay, I have this blockchain. We can use that because it will solve all of your problems currently. And the bank says, okay, set it up. So SIA goes and they set it up. So that's what they do. They connect the technology. They find its use case and they apply it to their clients, but they also set it up for their clients. So it's a very, it's a very beneficial partnership between these people. Now, Let's imagine that that blockchain solution works for five years, but now this new shiny new technology comes out in the blockchain universe. And this bank says, oh, I really want to utilize that technology. But now all of their data is on blockchain. 
how do you remove data and move data from one blockchain to another without interoperability? Do you know how crazy of an experience that would be? How much work, manpower, money that would cost? It'd be unfathomable. So what do you do? Well, you get quant over ledger and it allows you to always one to move your data seamlessly and to interact with multiple blockchains Two, it also allows for the company enterprise bank etc whatever it is to always be on top of the best technology because when quant builds these standards this framework new blockchain technology can follow those standards and then quant over ledger can adapt in interacting with that new blockchain and so if that bank that needed that blockchain solution said oh i'll just use overledger or sia said oh you just use overledger which they have that's the point of this sia did partner with quant and they actually adopted overledger and so now they use overledger rather than giving a single blockchain solution so now every time a bank needs a blockchain solution they have a guy who works with overledger who can connect all the blockchains so then they can give them whatever blockchain they solution solution they need and within changing technologies, they can apply that new technology to their system. So if this new technology comes out and the bank says, I want that technology, they say, okay, no problem. You're, on, you're already using Overledger. So we can just simply set it up and connect you to that new blockchain because it's going to follow this framework, which Gilbert and Martin and Andrew all understand. That is the game. It's not about trying to get everybody to adopt your solution it's about being one of the few that is following the new regulations and that is done in a very smart and clever way by creating that framework and of course this also helps a lot with the adoption of quant over ledger because sia was actually involved with uh, around 600 plus banks and as soon as over ledger made this deal as soon as Quant made this deal with Sia, they instantly got access and implemented Overledger with those banks. So an absolutely outrageous deal. Super good. If you guys want to know more, go check out my video. It's going to be at the end of this one. I'm going to put it at the very end of this video. So go check that out. It's very important. If you are interested in Quant or if you hate Quant, go check it out because I hope I can change your mind. So now we're going to go into my Bitcoin prediction of where we are going because guys if you're invested in any coin um you know it's it's wise to it, it's wise to know where bitcoin's going because statistically and I'm, I'm a man of odds i like to play the odds that's what this game is all about if bitcoin goes up statistically speaking everything else goes up if bitcoin goes down statistically speaking everything else goes down so if we know where bitcoin is going we know where everything else is going. So like I said at the beginning of this video, guys, we actually predicted this call using simply Bitcoin order book as well as our RSI levels, use some divergence, et cetera, et cetera. And what are we looking at now? Well, we're in a very strange position. We're in a very strange position, but we are hitting a lot of resistance. Uh, there's potential for us to definitely rise up here to this uh, sort of resistance here and then shoot back down or just from here just as easily we could drop down now i'm in short currently i'm aiming for right about here at 16514 it looks like uh, around that area and i'm probably going to hold right down to 1600 or just above 1600 because we also have those front runners who are waiting for that support and then they front run it we have a lot of support at 1600 if we have enough selling pressure watch the volume guys if we have enough selling pressure we could shoot straight through this just like the initial prediction and fall right down onto this level which is a huge level of support an even bigger level of support uh is all the way down here at uh, a 1500 14999 this is a huge lot of uh liquidity we are looking to potentially soon shoot down to 1500 i can definitely see it in the near future but in the very near future on a very micro level we are definitely looking uh, simply for this kind of downwards move uh the safe route i would say around 16 514 pretty safe we are looking definitely to at least get down to there and if not i am aiming down for uh these levels down here um, but most importantly my i'm going to be 
uh, ending my short position down around 1600. So uh, these are definitely potential riskier play here, but uh, simple play. So we have basically low risk, mid risk, high risk is how I'd say, um, but all pretty good moves. I would say we are definitely eventually going to head down here anyhow, down to 1500. But like I said, guys, no financial advice. Uh, this is just how I am predicting the Bitcoin charts. Now, guys, thank you for watching this video. If you guys want more videos like this on Quant, subscribe, do whatever you got to do. I will see you in the next one.